welcome language learners from all around the globe to Listen Up, the podcast that takes you on a captivating voyage through the English language. Whether you've just started your journey or have been navigating the intricacies of English for some time, this podcast is designed to be your trusty compass, guiding you towards fluency and unlocking the wonders of English. I'm your host, Karen, a passionate traveller and an experienced teacher of English as a second language. Join me as we embark on an exciting expedition filled with British history read by a native speaker. Together, we'll conquer the challenges and celebrate the victories of learning English as a foreign language. Each episode of Listen Up will immerse you in a variety of topics from aspects of British culture, history and literature. We'll explore useful vocabulary that will empower you to communicate confidently in English. If you want to read along with the podcast, head to my website www.onepawinthesand.com slash ESL. The link is in the description. But this podcast isn't just about learning English in isolation. It's about building a community of language learners, supporting one another and fostering a love of the English language. I encourage you to engage with us through my Patreon page where you can connect with fellow learners, ask questions and share your own language journey. So whether you're sipping tea in Tokyo, walking the streets in Sao Paulo or studying in a bustling cafe in Berlin, Listen Up is here to accompany you on your quest for English fluency. Join me as we embark on this transformative expedition where language becomes an adventure and your dreams of effective communication become a reality. Today's episode is called Worm Charming. When it comes to quirky, eccentric and downright magical festivals, the United Kingdom boasts a treasure trove of unique celebrations. Among these, the International Festival of Worm Charming stands out as a charming and unconventional event that brings together the heartwarming spirit of a rural community, a love for nature, and the peculiar art of charming earthworms from their subterranean homes. Nestled in the heart of the UK's countryside, a small village of Wollaston in Cheshire becomes the epicentre of worm charming enchantment every year. The setting is quintessentially British, with picturesque landscapes, quaint cottages and rolling fields that stretch as far as the eye can see. The local school's playing field transforms into a whimsical stage for worm charming competitors, with participants from far and wide converging on this tiny village. Worm charming might sound like a spell from a fantasy novel, but it's a real, time-honoured skill. The goal is simple, coax as many earthworms as possible to the surface within a 30 minute time frame. Participants must use only non-harmful methods to charm the worms, ensuring the safety and well-being of these underground residents. While wizarding wands and fairy dust won't work, worm charmers employ an array of ingenious, albeit unconventional tools garden forks, vibrations created by tapping spades, and even musical instruments like violins are all part of the charmer's arsenal. Some champions swear by their secret methods, often passed down through generations. At the heart of the International Festival of Worm Charming is the competition itself, with a patch of land marked out in three metre square plots Contestants jump in, trying to coax earthworms from the soil using their chosen techniques. The atmosphere is electric, filled with laughter, banter, and a sprinkle of friendly rivalry. The real magic happens in the form of teamwork. This is a shared challenge, and teams of three must coordinate their efforts. 
As one charmer's violin serenades the worms, another might tap their spade, while the third works their garden fork like a maestro conducting a symphony. The collective effort is mesmerising, and when the worms start to wriggle to the surface, the crowd erupts with applause. Throughout the years, the International Festival of Worm Charming has seen some exceptional feats. The current record for charming the most worms in half an hour, set in 2009, stands at a staggering 567 worms, and she was only 10 years old. This remarkable achievement underlines the dedication, creativity and skill that worm charmers bring to the field each year. There are 18 rules that have to be followed, including no digging, nothing toxic can be used, and incomplete worms will not be counted. What sets this festival apart is the sense of community and family that it fosters. The entire village joins in the celebration, making it a family-friendly event. From homemade refreshments and delightful picnic areas to stalls selling crafts and local produce. The festival offers something for everyone. Kids eagerly participate in the junior championships and the village resounds with laughter. In addition to all the fun and frolic, the International Festival of Worm Charming has a deeper purpose. The event supports various charitable causes and the festival's unique connection with nature fosters an appreciation for the environment and conservation efforts. If you think one village being obsessed with worms is strange, we actually have a second in Devon. Black Orton has a whole festival dedicated to the worm that includes music and dancing for a full weekend. The competition they hold is similar to the one in Wollaston, but the contestants only get a one metre square rather than three, and it includes an official cheat who encourages people to cheat and even sells secret worms before the competition starts. The Worm Charming events are a testament to the UK's charming and eccentric traditions, proving that even the smallest creature can inspire the grandest celebrations. It's a delightful example of how small villages can come together and create an enchanting experience. So if you ever find yourself in Cheshire or Devon, consider attending these charming events. Unearth the magic of worm charming, where the love for worms, nature and community come together in a harmonious and, at times, hilarious celebration. And that wraps up another episode of Listen Up. I hope you enjoyed learning about my topic today and practicing your English. Remember, the exploration doesn't have to end here. If you have any lingering questions or want to continue the conversation, I've got some great opportunities for you. First off, I offer private lessons for those of you eager to expand your knowledge further, whether it's practicing today's subject or exploring other topics. I'm here to guide you on your English journey reach out to me through my website or social media platforms and let's embark on a personalized learning experience together. I have been involved with training people for more than 10 years. I've been teaching English as a second language for over a year, in which time I have taught over 500 students, many of whom are regulars. But wait, there's more. If you're a devoted fan of Listen Up and want to show your support, consider joining our Patreon community. Your contribution directly helps us bring you more episodes and maintain the quality of our show. Your support truly means the world to me and we couldn't continue this podcast without you. So whether you choose private lessons or Patreon or both, I look forward to staying connected and exploring the fascinating realms of English as a second language together. Thank you once again for joining us on Listen Up. Until next time, keep practicing. Thank you.